I'm super impressed. What the hell are these massive things here? They are simply enormous demonstration uh, meters um, that are available for schools. Uh, they are, I'm afraid, fearsomely expensive. Uh, if you Google them, make sure you're sitting down first. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you can afford them, um, I have to say they are absolutely brilliant. You can definitely see these uh, from the back of a very crowded, crowded classroom. So I'm quite jealous. I might need to, at some point, sit down and have a look at how much they cost. But yeah, so we've got these things. Uh, I can see why they're used for this. But yeah. what are you going to show us today? More importantly, uh, there's this kit which was produced many, many years ago. And some schools have it and some schools don't. It was called, um, I believe, uh, just 2.8 centimetre, 2 centimetre EM wave uh, kit made by Unilab. Uh, that's the receiver and this is the transmitter. If you've got this uh, as teachers in your school, if you find this in the back of a cupboard, do not throw it away. It is really, really good, but you may well not have got the uh, instructions that originally went with it. All you need to do is connect uh, the receiver to either a meter, in this case a, a micrometer, um, or even just to a, an old um, amplifier and loudspeaker unit and yep. that will give you an output. And then the transmitter needs feeding with a very unsmoothed uh, AC waveform. So I'm running it off the AC output to the power supply, but I've also put a diode in series with one of them so as to half wave rectify it. And it's uh, the particular electronics inside uh, use that very, very unsmoothed waveform in order to produce and I guess that's just a quirk of the equipment that uh, different teachers might have in their schools. I guess there's probably other things that do it in a similar way. So. Um, well, any diode, uh, more or less, will do. Um, but this kit only seems to have been made for um, a few decades, a few decades ago. And it's as far as I know, you can't buy anything like this now. So if you've got it, um, you really don't want to be throwing it away. Yeah. Um, even, if, uh, even if it doesn't seem to be working, it's worth finding someone who can maybe mend it for you because it's, uh, it's absolutely great. You can use it for loads of things. Uh, 2.8 centimetres, uh, you'll probably know, is a microwave um, frequency. Uh, but because it's only uh, milliwatts, it's not going to cook anything. Um, so you don't need to be worried about that. Though pupils sometimes are when you talk about it being a, a microwave emitter. Um, so if I switch the... And fire on. You can see that I'm definitely getting an output, um, and just very simply, I can stick my hand in the way, and you can see that it definitely is blocking off something. Um, you can do all sorts of things with it. Uh, there were it was sometimes supplied with bits of aluminium sheet uh, that can stand up, so you can uh, you can demonstrate very very simple reflection, for example. Yeah, so I guess you take the sheet away. It's reflecting really nicely. Very nice. Um, you could even get smaller uh, bits of aluminium sheeting like that that you could then set up as a double slit and then move this around showing that you get superposition, which was another nice demonstration to do. You could even do measurements on the desk and uh, confirm things like D sine theta equals N lambda. Um, but really, I think uh, one of the things that is really good to show is that the usual explanation or the usual analogy given in textbooks for polarisation is wrong. Okay, so this, the wrong way around. so this is where we can start confusing people, but uh, I think it's an analogy, I suppose, isn't it? So that's as the important thing. As long as you thing. keep in mind that the picket fence analogy, as it's sometimes called, is just an analogy, then it's fine. So the normal way it goes in textbooks is, imagine a fence with uh, vertical bars, and imagine you've got a piece of string or rope threaded through, and first of all, you send in waves by flicking the string up and down. Now, those waves would clearly get through in that situation to yep. the fence. And if you flick the wave sideways, they would get blocked. So that's now, pretty standard kind of polarisation, isn't it? Totally standard explanation for polarisation, except it's the wrong way round. With what happens with, obviously it would happen that way with uh, rope and a fence. Yep. But when you're talking about electromagnetic waves, including light, so when you've got those little bits of Polaroid that you move around, mm -hmm. you can't see the bars in them, you can't see anything like that. So it's easy not to appreciate that it's the wrong way around. Just to convince the viewer, if we look in there, you can see there's a tiny short little aerial. Yes, yeah, so they're kind of at the back. At right at the back, very short and stubby, and it is very definitely, at the moment, vertical. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in, and you can just about see... There, there we go. That's, that uh, aerial is vertical. Yeah. So that means that when we send in our um, ugly, unsmoothed AC input to that, the electrons in that little aerial will jiggle up and down yeah. vertically, and will produce vertically polarised... Uh, waves, yeah. so, polarised microwaves. So the wave's moving from here to there, it's going up and down, so the electric part of the wave yep. is moving up and down. Absolutely. 
and uh, the receiver is really just exactly the same. And again, it might be tricky, but if you zoom in, you okay. can see that there's basically the same thing there that's acting as a receiver. Oh, I've got it. Perfect. There we go. Now, because this has a vertical aerial, it means straight away that you would only get an output here, you would only measure anything if the two aerials are in the same direction. So if I turn this through 90 degrees, yeah, I you can see that it really is acting so, in so a that, polarised that, way. So that, that definitely shows that there are plain polarised waves being emitted by that uh, transmitter. Absolutely. And if I turn it through another 90 degrees, the signal comes back, and then another 90 degrees it goes away, and another 90 degrees it comes back. But I'll turn it back to where it is because I don't mind the wires getting too twisted. Yeah, okay, and it's still receiving soon. We can see on, on the, the massive uh, ammeter there that there's definitely a reading there, even if we can't hear the sound. Yes, absolutely. The sound yeah. is just there because it's a nice little addition. So, if I take this, which is uh, my net of uh, aluminium rods. Yeah. Now, remember again, we've got vertically polarised waves coming out of here and a vertically polarised receiver or a receiver of vertically polarised waves. According to the picket fence analogy, if I put this Polaroid in the way now, it should let the waves through more or less unimpeded. Right. And in fact, it pretty much blocks them. To make things worse, if I turn it through 90 degrees, where the picket fence analogy would say that they would then uh, start to be let, uh, blocked, Okay, so that kind of doesn't make sense, I guess, with what I've been teaching as well for the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the wrong way around. Now, this is how it works. It's actually much more interesting, and it shouldn't be too tricky for kids to get their heads around. Mm -hmm. So, the reason why it blocks them in this position is that as the electric field goes in oscillating vertically, the free electrons in here, because it's a metal, the free electrons in here will oscillate sympathetically, and then they will re-radiate, but they will re-radiate equally in all directions. So in the original direction, there'll be hardly anything of the initial intensity being transmitted in that direction. It will just get spread out throughout the room. Yeah. When you, do the, uh, when you have it this way around, the vertically polarized waves come in, they hit this, and because the bars are now horizontal, the free electrons there cannot oscillate sympathetically vertically to any particularly noticeable extent. So therefore, they absorb hardly any of the energy, and it just passes straight through. So what we're saying about is, um let me get this in my head. So the electric wave comes in, and the energy from that wave, rather than kind of moving through, it kind of gets absorbed by this, uh, by the metal here, yep. and that's re-emitted in all directions, so actually very little of it actually gets through. The other way, because uh, as the wave is coming along, the, uh, of the wave, not much of the energy of the wave is absorbed by the metal, because the electrons can't move up and down, and that means most of the wave carries on through, which is why we detect it, and only a very small amount is radiated out and lost. Absolutely right. Um, so you can move it around and you can see that it very definitely is acting in exactly the way that you would expect a Polaroid to do. It's just the wrong way around compared to the picket fence analogy. So the picket fence analogy is absolutely fine as long as it is absolutely clear in your mind that it is an analogy and it predicts the, ex uh, the exact wrong behaviour for polarisation and Polaroids uh, working with electromagnetic mm -hmm. waves. However, if you're a student, don't panic too much. Uh, whatever you, you know, whatever your teachers are, taught, uh, are teaching you um, is is fine. Okay, but again, I think like anything in physics, you've got to realise that there are limitations in our analogies. And actually, you can understand this about kind of maybe the way that uh, you know how electric uh, or how EM waves are kind of absorbed and emitted and transmitted and so on. So Absolutely there's right. there's no reason for this to kind of mess with your head too much. Just kind of spend a bit of time, have a think about it and talk to your teachers, because this, uh, this is really interesting. Yeah, and it was the sort of thing that I taught for years without realising just how subtle the reality was, or slightly different the reality was, and it's, uh, we're all expanding our knowledge as Brilliant. time goes by. Brilliant. Thank you.